Uh, well, economists uh, learned a lot in the last year uh, about criminal behavior. Uh, we know that uh, the, so the conditions in the society uh, are an important determinant. For example, we know that uh, when unemployment goes up, uh, people tend to engage more in crime. We know that uh, the human capital of people is a very is a strong predictor of criminal behavior. We know that more educated people commit less crime. And uh, uh, economists have learned in the last years that uh, also incentives in terms of punishment work. So when uh, you increase the punishment, uh, you expect uh, uh, people to engage less in true crime. Uh, taken together, these three things uh, say that uh, policies that uh, work a lot uh, on the side of uh, improving the labor market conditions should uh, map uh, into a reduction in crime that policies that favor the, the growth of uh, human capital uh, should map into the reduction of crime and also increasing punish punishment should uh, induce less crime. What is the best mix of, poli of, of these three kinds of policies uh, really depends uh, on, on, the, on each country. Uh, I'm pretty convinced that in many European countries uh, and uh, also in the United States now we are punishing a lot uh, and maybe we could do more on the other two sides. In the United States uh, they use the, the principle three strikes is out. Is that a good incentive? Well, uh, this, uh, this, according to economists it seems that uh, this kind of policy uh, was uh, working pretty well in terms of uh, 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 reducing the propensity uh, of people to engage into crime. And so under this point of view was a kind of good incentive because it was raising the price of committing the, the marginal crime. But uh, with some caveat, th this is a policy that is uh, extremely costly, okay? Because it increases uh, kind of automatically the number of people that tend to go to jail or to prison, and a prison is an extremely costly kind of incentive. Okay, it costs a lot uh, to people. So uh, I can say, for example, in Italy, where uh, I am original from, every prisoner in a prison a day costs about 150 euros. So it's a lot for the taxpayers. So again, the question is, uh, is this uh, an effective incentive? Maybe yes, but is it uh, an efficient incentive? Well, Again, uh, maybe that the marginal dollar we have, that the marginal dollar we have to the taxpayer could be spent better. Could be spent, for example, in other policies that, at the end of the story, are able to reduce crime in the same way and uh, uh, maybe that cost less to the taxpayer and also to the people that, at the end of the story, uh, uh, are, um, are punished themselves because uh, prison is a very painful kind of punishment. Is it possible to have a society without crime? Well, uh, a society without crime uh, is a utopia and uh, it, maybe it's uh, a non-desirable one in the sense that uh, uh, we economists know that some amount of crime is a kind of efficient uh, because uh, there, there is uh, an area in which uh, the benefits for those that commit a crime can be higher than the cost they induce to the society. And so we don't want to deter and to, to reduce to zero that kind of, uh, of crimes. So uh, to, to give a complete answer to your question, some people might desire to have a society without crime, but this would be extremely costly at the, at the end of the story, very inefficient.